Two of the following videos are true while the other one is trash. Can you spot the fake? Season 3, Episode 2. Round 1, let's begin. A steel screwdriver like this isn't a permanent magnet, so it can't attract and pick up small bolts just by touching them. However, if you take a strong neodymium magnet like this and slide the flat side along it in one direction, now it becomes magnetized and the bolt can be picked up. Take an empty ice cube tray and fill two cubes up with tap water. Then add several strips of paper towel to one of them and put them in the freezer. When hit with a hammer, the regular ice cube shatters into a bunch of different pieces. However, the ice cube with strips of paper towel will stay almost entirely intact. If you fix one of two equal sized coins in place and roll the second one around it, the second coin will do one full rotation like this before returning to its original position. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. If you thought this video was fake, you'd be wrong. Rubbing a magnet like this can magnetize a steel screwdriver which helps prevent you from losing small screws and bolts. You can think of the atoms of iron in the steel as little magnets themselves. Normally, they're pointed in all sorts of directions, so it won't act like a magnet, but rubbing the magnet in one direction aligns them. If you thought adding just a few strips of weak paper towel to an ice cube would actually make it this strong, nice job, because you'd be correct. That means the coin doesn't rotate exactly once like this, but rather two times from our external perspective. Veritasium brought this cool demo to my attention, so check out his much longer video if you want the full explanation. Here's a quick recap to help you follow before moving on to the next round. Next up, it's time for round two. First up, add some food dye to a plastic bottle with water in it to make it more visible. Place a straw through the cap and seal around the straw with putty. Then screw the cap on tightly. Now blowing into the straw will cause the water level to shoot up. Next, you hopefully remember from last round that you can magnetize a screwdriver by rubbing a magnet on it, but then, if you want to demagnetize it for whatever reason, you can simply dip it into water and the polar water molecules will remove the magnetic alignment. First, pour some milk into a bowl. Then grab a scoop of cacao powder and dip it in the milk. You might expect the powder to be wet now, but when you take the spoon out, the powder underneath the surface remains completely dry. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. Blowing into the straw does cause the water level to rise once you let go. Blowing air into the bottle increases the pressure inside the bottle, meaning when you take your lips off, water is forced up and out. If you thought this video was real, you'd be right. The cacao powder is mostly hydrophobic, meaning only a thin layer of cacao powder actually gets wet. If I flatten it with a spoon and place it in water instead, the same thing happens. If I make a crater in the spoon and do it again, you can see the water bead and roll off, just like with hydrophobic sand. That means you can't demagnetize a screwdriver by putting it in water. The actual way I demagnetized it was by rubbing the magnet on it again, except rotating the magnet on its side like this. This removes the alignment of the iron atoms, as discussed before. Here's a quick recap to help you follow before moving on to the next round. Now it's time for the final round, round 3. A single AA battery can't turn on a standard light bulb because it can only provide about a third of the current that the light bulb would need. However, if you take three AA batteries and put them in parallel, the light bulb will be able to turn on, although it can't achieve full brightness. Take the middle seal off a jar and screw the lid back on. Now fill it up with water to the very top. If you quickly and carefully flip the bottle over, yes, some of the water will spill out during the transition, but once it gets completely in the vertical position, the lip on the jar helps the water's surface tension keep most of the water in the jar. The color white is a combination of all wavelengths of light, which is why adding three primary colors together and mixing them results in white paint. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. If you're stressing because all of them seem pretty obviously fake, nice job, because you'd be correct. For this video, as I touched the batteries to the base of the light bulb, I simply lowered it, which put the light bulb in range of my plasma globe, which as I've shown before, can illuminate fluorescent light bulbs from a distance. I didn't only take the seal off the jar, I replaced it with a mesh screen, which does help the water's surface tension keep most of the water in the jar. Although white light is a combination of all wavelengths of light, adding all primary paint colors together does not create white paint. This highlights a critical difference between additive mixing like in the case of light and subtractive mixing like in the case of paint. Here's a quick recap of the final round. Thanks for watching to the end and I'll see you next time.